This is the new Artisol D22. It's Artisol's latest and largest pen display. Is it as good as Artisol's smaller counterparts? Let's find out. This unit was provided to me by the folks over at Artisol for review purposes. So what is it? It's a monitor. You plug it into your Windows or Mac computer, but there's more. It's a pen display. That means that you can use the included pen to draw directly on the screen. I guess you could do more than just draw with it, but since I'm a professional artist... Really? We're throwing around the word professional now? That's the functionality that I'm going to be looking at. So let's talk specs. The screen is 21.5 inches across. The resolution is Full HD 1920 by 1080. It comes with a pen with 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity, has a built-in stand, hotkeys on both sides of the screen, and a little scrolly wheel for the handy zooming and brush resizing. The screen looks good. I like the colors out of the box. I didn't need to do any adjusting or tweaking. It has a 72% Adobe RGB gambit. That's not a lot, but that's pretty standard for this type of device in this price range. The screen doesn't have any sort of coating on it. That's good and bad. That tends to make the colors look better, but you don't get quite as much drawing resistance when you're using the stylus. A matte coating or a UV coating, that sort of thing will actually slow your stylus down when you're drawing. It's not quite as slick. That really comes down to personal preference and the type of thing that you're looking for in your drawing display. There is some parallax. The parallax is the distance between where your pen hits the screen and where your cursor appears on that screen. Pretty much everything I've tested on my big list O tablets is comparable in this area. Only Wacom or an iPad or one of the all-in-one tablets like the Surface have really improved on that, but those are much more expensive. Now sometimes with a screen like this you get a hot spot on it, this one has one right along the bottom. And it also gets pretty warm while you're using it. So if your hand gets hot and sweaty, the D22 also comes with one of these handy dandy drawing gloves. Nah, don't worry, I'm not gonna do the drawing glove dance again. Okay, I lied. The thing I like most about the display is actually the stand. It's very similar to the Yi Yi Nova I tested last year. In fact, it feels almost identical and I wouldn't be surprised if they're using the same exact parts. It has these rubber grip notchy things along the back. It's designed to hang off the edge of your desk. Now, at first this may sound like a bad idea, fulcrums being what they are, but it's super solid, super comfortable, it really feels good to take this large 21 inch screen and pull it closer to you. It's comfortable to use. I don't hunch over it quite as much as I do on some of the other larger monitors I've tested. The one thing I should point out is the leg only goes back so far. You can only pull it back so far. So the lowest angle that you can set this at is about 45 degrees. Now I gotta say that angle was perfect for me, but if you like it to go lower, you can't do that here, at least not with this stand. Since the USB and power outlets and that sort of thing are attached to the stand, I don't know how easy it is to set this up with another stand. If you have a VESA mount, this will work with that, but anything short of that, I'm not sure it's going to work really well with another stand. So let's get to the meat of things. The pen, how does it draw? Well, the pen is a mixed bag. It's a tale of two operating systems. On Windows, it's pretty good. On the Mac, the pen can be a little bit shaky. Now, this is a battery-powered pen. You will need a AAA battery to use it. It doesn't come with a AAA battery, so you're going to have to have one on hand. As far as how long that battery lasts, I'm not really sure. I've only been using this for a little over a week. Pen hasn't died yet. Hopefully it lasts a couple more weeks on me. The pen itself is comfortable to hold and the tablet comes with a little clippy doodad that goes along the top so you can stick the pen in there when you're not using it. Now the pen is kind of a weird shape so you have to position it just right in that clip otherwise it's gonna pop right out on you. So let's talk about windows. On windows the pressure is really good. There is some wave when you're drawing your slow angled lines and testing those out but they are clean. As you speed up your strokes to normal drawing speeds it feels good and it feels natural. If it's nice to draw with. On the Mac, it just feels very mechanical. It's not as smooth. So here's me testing the pressure over on Windows. Nice, smooth lines. On the Mac, I have some problems just getting smooth tracking on the pen. The lines just don't flow and look good. Now, Photoshop has a stroke stabler now. This is something they added to CC uh, last fall, 2017. That helps out a bunch, gives me a clean, curved line that I'm looking for. But if you're using a drawing program that doesn't have that kind of line correction to it, like Clip Studio or Photoshop, you might want to look elsewhere on the Mac. If if you're looking for something that does really nice line work that's a Wacom alternative, I would actually take a look at the other Artisol tablets, the D13 and the D16. I did a review of the 16 a few months ago. I really like it. In fact, that's been my main tablet over the last couple months. Most of my animations I do for this channel have been done on that tablet in Adobe Animate. Now, since the lines do look pretty good on Windows and they don't look quite as good on the Mac, I'm really hoping that this is a driver thing. Obviously, it's not a hardware thing since I'm using the same hardware and getting different results on different operators. 
operating systems. So hopefully we get some new drivers in the near future that'll clean this up. If you stumbled upon this review and it's a couple months after I actually posted it in June of 2018, you should really check out my website. I'll be posting any updates I have about this tablet there as I go. Also, my website's just a good place to get other information. For example, I post other people's reviews on these tablets and I also have a list of my favorite ones that I've used with short reasons why, plus links to all the videos that I've made about them. So what about this 2048 levels of pressure? Some of the newer pen displays out there have bumped up to 8,000 levels of pressure. I say this with every review, but I really can't tell the difference. But if you are one of those people who can, that's something to keep in mind. Another thing that I'm asked often, because I always forget to mention it, is these Wacom alternatives don't have tilt recognition. This one is no different. There's no tilt on the pen. So let's do the pros and cons. So the pros, definitely, we're talking about the form factor. The size is great, 21 inches, that's big. I love that. Drawing on something this big just feels good, and I'm a big fan of the stand, how it hangs off the side of my desk. It's really comfortable, really easy to use, and it's pretty light to readjust. So when I'm done with it, I can set it up at a 90 degree angle and use it as a normal monitor. It's kind of like a transformer. Now the cons, really, there's there's just one that I'm homing in on here, and that is the line quality on the Mac. If you're using Windows, you're good to go. On a Mac, not so much. Uh, crossing my fingers and hoping that gets cleaned up at some point down the road. So looking at my website, my big list, where does this one fit in? It's tough, I really wanna love this one, but I can't quite do it just yet. Just the stand makes it so much more comfortable to use for long stretches of time, and I have been using these for hours on end, so it really matters to me to get better posture and a better position. For now, I'm still looking at the XP Pen and the Huion 22 displays, just because those are gonna give me better lines. And if that changes at some point down the road, I'll definitely let you know. So do you have any comments or questions, anything that I missed in this review? Let me know in the comment section down below. That's all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.